This video is sponsored by UPDF. Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to get into the iOS 18 updates that have come to Apple this year. But yeah, let's get into it because there's so much to get through today. There's so many new updates that we gotta get through. I'm not gonna get into absolutely every little thing that Apple has updated, but the thing is, I'm gonna give you what you need to know and what's gonna be most impactful to you. And also some of my favorites and some hidden features that Apple didn't mention in their keynote, but it's just some nice little touches that I think is pretty cool. So let's get into it. Now before we get into things, there is something that you guys need to know. If you are thinking of upgrading to iOS 18, you do have to have a compatible device as you can see on screen right now. So if you are wanting to upgrade, make sure you have an iPhone that is on the screen right now. Oh my days, I can't believe this bro. Control Center has got the biggest upgrade. Like it's literally on drugs at the moment. If we jump into control center it's got a massive overhaul this probably has been where apple has spent most of their time in this update i think the control center is where they've like spent a lot of time it has seen the biggest facelift in terms of a redesign uh, what we can see is that it all the controls used to be in like a, a square shape and now it's in like a circular shape so i mean they're sort of moving towards android in a way a lot of androids do have like circular app icons and that sort of thing so you know, Apple do steal so many things from Android in this update, it's crazy, but it's all welcome changes. So with the new control center, we actually get new groups of controls. We got like our main favorite controls up top, then our playback controls for music and podcasts, and then one more swipe down and we have connectivity controls. We also get access to like a whole new control library that has new controls from your apps and you can just literally go crazy with this one guys. Like seriously, Apple has added a bunch more control over your phone. It has been like an absolutely major update on the control center and I'm absolutely loving it. It looks more poppy, it looks more fresh and vibrant. A new update that we have with the lock screen is now that you know your torch and camera controls that's on your lock screen and a lot of people have been complaining for years now that you know you can't swap them out and people want different things that they can do with those two widgets well now you can swap out those controls now that i'm in this mode to edit the phone to edit the lock screen we just go to customize as usual go to the lock screen as usual but now you'll see that there's actually minus signs next to uh, each control that we can now get rid of and swap out so if i wanted to get rid of the torch now i can just press this it'll add and again we now have a whole new library of controls that we can play with so you can really go crazy with this one for me though personally i'm just sticking with the torch and the camera on the lock screen because that just makes the most sense to me like those are the two things that i need without having to unlock my iphone the other apps if i'm actually going to be getting into them sorry the other controls if i'm actually wanting to put them on my lock screen i would be opening up my phone anyway so it doesn't really make much sense are you guys actually going to swap out your torch and camera or you reckon you're gonna keep it? Because for me, I'm just keeping the torture camera. It just makes the most sense to me. Okay, this is the coolest part of this new update. We now have the home screen. It just goes crazy, it goes crazy. We have all the customization we want. I don't even know where to start. Okay, I'll start off with saying that we can move apps wherever we want on the grid and it won't just automatically go back. Like, you can move an app wherever you want on the grid and it can be there. That's crazy that Apple has actually finally come to do this. Like, do you know how long it took for this to happen on iPhone? We've been wanting this for years and now we can just put apps wherever we want, which works really well with like when you have like certain wallpapers where your apps are just in front of your wallpaper and, it's, and it looks bad. So now you can like relocate your apps around your wallpaper to make it look more aesthetic, I guess. So yeah, that's a really good feature that's come by. Another major customization feature we're getting is the fact that we can actually customize the look of our apps. So just by going, holding down the lock screen, going up into the top left and pressing edit, then customize, we can now edit the colors of our apps. There's normal mode, which is what we've seen all throughout the history of iPhone. Then there's dark mode, which is, it just changes all the apps to like a black, dark sort of feel like it's like light mode and dark mode on the iphone the only problem that i have with this is not all apps actually are compatible with the dark mode like for instance my banking app uh combank it doesn't actually work with the dark mode which is so then it's like some apps are just popping out and it doesn't really look as clean of a look other feature that you have that everyone's going talking a lot about on social media is the tinted feature so as i was saying you can literally change the color of your apps so I can just change the hue and if I increase the saturation of the hue you'll see every single thing is changing 
on my phone like all the colors like I could make it a cool like red if we increase it all the way I think purple or blue might look nice to go with the wallpaper I can, I can even press the eyedropper tool pick like an accent color so like let's say I wanted to go this color down here like a nice lighter color to contrast with the wallpaper and then I can click out of it and so like it makes everything one tint it gives it like a sort of cool theme oh purple kind of looks kind of cool so yeah you can kind of mess around with this it does look good for certain things I will say it can get very messy now if we scroll through these widgets it does tint every single widget um, so like my YouTube widget I would rather that be white rather than purple things as you can see like purple text there I would rather that to be white you can also see like my calendar widget that is all purple now so like the weather widget looks really nice but some widgets really don't go well with it and this is where it can get messy like and if you can see all the album art is sort of tinted with the purple and it's all washed out so if you had a bunch of apps with that it, in my opinion it doesn't look the best the only problem that I have with this is when we now go to the app library like it's kind of hard to find certain apps because every single app looks the damn same so literally look in my, all of my sport apps they all literally look exactly the same and it's kind of hard to figure out which one is which so that is something to consider if you're going to be tinting let me know what you guys are going to do me personally i'm just going to keep this um, as the normal classic mode because i feel like that looks the most cleanest it just looks a lot more cleaner i can find apps a lot more easier because i know what they look like and yeah that's just the way to go for me this feature is just it's not it's cool and all that we have this this feature to customize things and i think apple was trying to have a go at like the icon packs that that's so popular all over youtube you see people you know selling their own icon packs getting their own custom icons for for, for the app icons and stuff but and this was like apple's like okay now we're gonna do this it's not the right way to do it i think that just the they need to i don't know fine tune it a bit more so the other big updates that we have with the home screen is now we actually have the ability to make the apps large and small so you can actually get rid of all the labels and the app names that is underneath the apps make them really big so this is actually quite a cool feature i do like this because it actually sort of makes your feel your phone feel a little bit bigger you also have the other feature to lock and hide apps any app on your phone no matter what it is you can lock it with face id and you can hide it so that it won't be shown on your in your app library even if you're searching for a hidden app it's not going to come up and it'll be in a hidden folder within the app library but the cool thing is the hidden folder doesn't even show you what's in the hidden folder i don't know how this would actually be useful for me i'm not going to actually hide any apps <laughs> people i got nothing to hide so chill okay another app that has got a major overhaul and redesign is the settings app what you'll notice first is that as you're scrolling through the settings page it actually ends a lot quicker and this is because Apple has actually put a lot of time into categorizing everything and just organizing everything in a better way. And all of your installed apps are no longer on the settings. If you can't find a, your installed app settings, it's actually in a folder just for the installed apps called the apps folder. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, just everything's a little bit more organized and I guess easier to navigate. iMessage has also got a pretty big update as well. Now we do have new like a new paint job i guess on the tap back features so we can now tap back of course with our original tap back uh, animations but now we also can tap back with emojis or stickers custom stickers that we have so that's really cool as well sort of android and google were doing that for years but now we have it on imessage so that's cool uh, we also have like new message effects as well just new animations with how you can send it so i wasn't really excited when i heard that i'm gonna be honest because it's like yeah it's just a cool message feature a cool message like animation it's not going to change the game for me not going to make me buy an iphone if i was an android user something that's really cool is that they've added the ability to style your text so you can change your text to bold you can underline it and you can strike through it you can even put it in italics so that's really cool you have a bit more freedom to express yourself there and the last thing with the iMessage is we also have send later which is a really cool feature because if you someone like me who has a, a very very busy life you sometimes do forget people's birthdays and you can write them in a message to your friend to say happy birthday and then put in send later and that message will now send and you don't even have to worry about it which is a really really cool feature something i will be using a lot in the future thank you apple 
I tend to receive a lot of PDFs, whether it's through my messages or my emails, especially as a uni student. My professors are always sending me PDFs of the lecture content or of the resources that I need for my classes. And it can get a bit chaotic and crazy sometimes just to organize everything. But you know me, I'm always about trying new apps and anything that will make my life easier, I guess. If you haven't checked out my recent video, the top five apps for students, check it out in the description. I will leave links below. So I came across UPDF and they were kind enough to sponsor today's video. They introduced me to a whole new world of PDF organization. UPDF is the seamless PDF editing and reading software that I have come to love and now use for all my PDF documents. Of course, good PDF software allows you to edit text, images, and links, but this app has honestly given me a very enjoyable reading experience when I read through my uni content. I can literally go on bookmark pages and the search capabilities on this thing are second to none. Coming towards the end of my semester now, I like to be able to highlight my lecture slides and write notes on them. And with UPDF's annotation tools, I am able to do so. I can add comments, text boxes, call outs, which is super helpful to remember important stuff. I can add sticky notes and of course, highlighting is super important. Now with AI taking over the world, I'm really happy that UPDF has taken the time to incorporate AI into its app which just makes studying so much easier and faster. It's like having a tutor right next to me when I study, explaining things to me that I just don't understand. Now that, that's a game changer. That comes in so clutch all the time. It can even summarize things for me, which I love because it's a huge time saver. Now I'm not wasting time listening to the unnecessary clutter in my lecture. Of course, you also have the option to translate PDF content if that's something that you might need. But what really caught my eye was that UPDF can actually turn your PDF into a mind map. And it's the first PDF tool that can actually do this, which is all made possible with ChatGPT 4.0, which is what's integrated into the UPDF app. UPDF is also also packed with a bunch of other handy features like its intelligent form filling feature. Whenever I need to fill out forms or even sign leave requests for work, I don't need to worry about the hassle of using multiple apps anymore. Everything is all in the one app. And that's what I love about this thing. Everything is all so organized and I can see and manage everything easily. Now with just a single license, you have access to UPDF and all platforms on up to four devices. Speaking of the license, it's actually a quarter of the price of Adobe Acrobat. But I've got an even better for you guys if you are interested, I've partnered with UPDF and I can offer you an exclusive discount if you click in the link down below in the description. I just want to say a huge thank you to UPDF for sponsoring today's video and providing me with an app to view all my PDFs for my uni content. I will definitely be using this in the future and just a big thank you again for sponsoring today's video. I'm so excited to watch this channel grow um, in terms of securing brand deals and partnering with more brands into the future. I do just want to say though that all the brand deals that are happening, all the sponsorships, all the things that I am promoting on this channel and coming into partnership with, they will only be products that I myself believe in and I myself use and that I think will actually bring benefit to you guys. At the end of the day, this channel is meant for you guys and to help bring value to you guys. So I'm only going to be promoting products that I actually believe in myself. Huge thank you for you, PDF, for sponsoring today's video. And thank you for all of you guys that have been subscribed for a while now too. So now let's get back to the video. I think for me, the app that's got the biggest redesign and the biggest overhaul and the biggest facelift is literally the photo app. It has actually been the hardest for me to learn and to understand how it is to use because the photos app has been the same for so long and now it's like completely changed. So there's like a, a lot more new tiles that you can swipe through and now nah, it's really cool, but it is it did take a while for me to get my head around and, and to learn. Now with the new iOS update, Apple has now put all your iCloud passwords into its own app. It used to live in like a tab, a separate tab in the settings app. You could see all your iCloud saved passwords, but now it has its own app. If you're searching for a Wi-Fi password, all of your Wi-Fi passwords are grouped into one Wi-Fi group. All of your security codes, all of your door codes, if you're using like smart doors and stuff. And then just a general folder for all your different passwords for all your apps. I do want to shout out to, I, to Apple for this because iCloud passwords is a seriously underrated and not talked about enough feature that comes with the iPhones. Like I don't have to remember any password at all. If I need to put in the password again, I don't have to remember it. I don't have to put in the password. I don't have to type it, nothing. I just ask for my face ID. It'll take the password from the passwords app and put it in automatically. If you have an iPhone and you're not using the iCloud passwords, you seriously should consider it because it is a very 
underrated feature, a very like golden feature that I use literally all the time. It saves me so much time. There is the new passwords app that you should be definitely using in the new iOS 18 update. And lastly, we have the calculator app. Now, it literally got a huge update and there's been a lot of hype about the new math notes feature, which I will get into in a second, but we got a newer, more friendly interface. And also a feature I really like is that it shows the equation you're typing just above the answer. This just comes in super handy when you have a lot of numbers to crunch and I don't know why this wasn't a feature years ago. There's a new currency conversion feature as well, which is super handy. Now I don't have to go into Google every single time, but with the new conversion feature, it's not just currency. There's also other different metrics as well. So the calculator is actually so much more useful than just your simple classic calculator. It's a lot more intuitive now because I've always had to use third party apps for my calculators, especially for uni, just because the Apple inbuilt calculators just didn't have enough features, but I feel like now I can definitely use it. You can even change it to like the scientific calculator and you'll now have literally all just like a normal calculator that you would normally have with like this, a finance calculator right here. I'll be honest, that's not a finance account calculator, but you get what I'm saying. Now, the big thing everyone was talking about is the math notes. Yes, you can do it on an iPhone, but I would prefer to do it on an iPad with the Apple Pencil, it makes more sense. But you still have the ability to do it on an iPhone if you don't have access to an iPad or whatnot. But basically what it is, is you draw your equations and once you're finished drawing an, an equation, just put the equal sign at the end and it'll just give you the answer and in your own handwriting as well. This is like a cheat code for high school. It's gonna be so handy when I'm doing all my math. And it's not just like simple math as well. Like you can do really complex equations and then it'll just give you the answer. And the cool thing is you can make uh, variables. You can even change the equation after you, after it's given you an answer and then it'll update the answer in live time in your own handwriting. It's just crazy how cool this is. It's the small things that I really like the most. No, I'm, I'm kidding. But no, nah, these are some cool new small things. We do get a new like squeeze animation. I found this out from watching uh, Siobhan's new video, but basically what it is is when you press the buttons on the on the phone, the bezels on the side sort of squeeze in. I'll see if you can see it on the camera, but see as I'm pressing the, the buttons of the volume, you can sort of see the phone, it like squeezes in. Even same thing with the off button. It squeezes in as well. So that's like really cool. I don't know how they thought of that or even to, to do that. It feels, makes the phone feel more, more alive. Like you're squeezing the phone. It's like, it, and I actually really like pressing my buttons now. So yeah, that's kind of cool. Another cool feature is the new torch animation, but this only works if you have a uh, dynamic island. So you have to have the dynamic island up the top. Look at that, look how cool this is. So basically what you can do is you just swipe up and down to adjust like the, the brightness of it, I guess. So as you can see, as I'm swiping it up and down, the brightness is going up and down. But you can also change the width of it by going in and out. How effective this is and how much it works, and if I'm actually ever going to like need to be able to change the width and the length of it, never, never, ever, ever am I gonna be able to use that. I would just use a proper torch, but it's, it's just a cool animation at the end of the day. How effective it's gonna be is another thing, so. It's just the small things that go a long way for me because me studying IT and finance, I can really appreciate the time and effort that developers go into into making these things like the squeeze animation and you know, the torch animation, but then just everything else on top of it. You can really appreciate it from a text point of view if you're really into that sort of space. But yeah, that's gonna wrap up today's video on the best new features that come with iOS 18. Let me know what you guys think about it. Let me know which features that you loved and which features you hate. Are you guys gonna use the new tinting feature and change your, your app color and make it look disgusting? Or are you going to, sorry guys, that was my bad, that was, no. If you guys can make it look good, props to you, but I don't think you can make it look good. I just, I don't see it happening. It just can't, it can't, it can't be. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please take the time to just give it a quick like and leave a comment below to let me know what you guys thoughts are on this. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. As always, peace and I'll see you next time. Open up the sword, swinging blades at these scrubs. Flock like bugs to the light, getting right. Treat my hoes like these raps. I don't really got a type on top. Bullshit. And all I needed was a mic. Yeah, yeah. Hey, pass the rock, it's all butter. Pack your bags and take flight. Don't worry, it's all covered. It's all covered. Hey, live your life while you can. Our days are all numbered. Rain could